Right, today we're going to talk about weathering, erosion, and deposition, and what the differences between those are. So the easiest way to describe it is weathering breaks it, erosion takes it, and deposition drops it. So if we have this boulder up here on the top of the hill, and let's say that it starts to rain on it, and maybe there's some cracks in the boulder, and slowly some of that rain water gets into some of those cracks in there, and it freezes, uh, and as water freezes, it expands. We call that ice wedging, and eventually, because of that ice wedging, the rock starts to break and fall into different pieces, and this piece breaks free. And this piece breaks free. And so we have weathered this apart. We, weathering has broken this rock apart. Now this rain is going to be running down the hill. All right. And so if it's running fast enough, it's going to take some of these rocks with it. All right. And so the faster that water is moving, the more it can take and the faster it can take it. So erosion moves this rock. Now it's going to keep moving as long as the water is moving fast enough. Obviously, the smaller particles can go further. It takes a lot of water to move a big particle, but if this was a small particle, then it can move uh, with just a little bit of water. And eventually, it gets down here, and as soon as the water slows, like when it enters a big body of water, it's going to deposit or drop it, and so it falls down here. So let's take a look at how that might happen in a couple of different situations. Um, one situation, you have water going down a river. And if you look at the river, you can see that the water is going to come down fast and it's going to bang into this side. And over here, it's going to be weathering and, and tearing away this curb. And you're going to have weathering and erosion. So it's going to weather it here and erode it and it's going to take it away. And it comes over here and it bangs in here. So on these far sides of the curb, you have weathering and then erosion as it takes it away. Now the opposite is happening on the inside of that curb. Right? So right in here you can see that it's going slower. If it's going fast over here. It's moving relatively slow around the inside and so it's depositing it which is what's going to happen is these rivers are going to start getting wider and wider and wider and wider. So you can tell an old river because it meanders. So here's a picture of an actual um, example down here. You can see the outside is where the water is moving the fastest and you're having weathering. On the inside of the curb, you're having deposition. All right. If we look at the Mississippi River, so you can see the Mississippi River is coming along down through here. All right, and it's gotten all of the sediment. It's, it's eroded an awful lot of that's farmland, so it's got a lot of sediment as it's moving down here. Eventually, when it hits the Gulf of Mexico, the water's going to slow down. So as it slows down, what are we going to have? Deposition. You can see all of this sand being deposited at the end of the Mississippi River. We call this a delta. So when the sand and sediment is being deposited at the end of the river, we call this a delta. This is a very important um, ecological area. It's where we get all of our great food, the shrimp and the crawfish that, that we all love, comes from this really nutrient-rich area. Okay, so a delta is at the end of a long river because it slows and then you have deposition. The l smaller the particle, the further out it might go and still be deposited out here. The bigger sediments are going to be dropping out right close to the end of the river. All right, there's a two, couple different ways we might have erosion. All right, we can have erosion um, the, uh, due to uh, water. So here in this situation, you can see that we have water erosion. The waves crashing along this beach have eroded these rocks here. This is the Grand Canyon. Uh, the Grand Canyon is 5,000 feet deep, and it was all cut from this Colorado River at the bottom as it's moving down through the sandstone. Okay, so erosion may happen because of water. Erosion may also happen because of wind. This sandstone, the wind has come across, and it picks up the little, little specks, little tiny bits of sand. And as the wind is whipping around, it would smack them into this rocks and one by one bit by bit it would slowly erode this so you find an awful lot of this in Arizona in the southwest